Hey guys, it's Mr. Stark again. Uh, what you're seeing right now is a different type of motor starter. And this one, instead of having a uh, bimetal or thermal or uh, uh, solder pot type overload, this one has an electronic overload. So quite smaller than the one that you saw the other day. Uh, right now this video is just it's going to show you exactly how to wire it. We're going to fire this up with indicator lights in the next video. And right now I'm going to show you how the point-to-point -point wiring is. So the first thing we're looking at is the motor starter itself. So before we get into the wires, we actually have to see what some of these items mean. The first thing that you're looking at are these letters and numbers and all this stuff. We've got to figure out what the heck this means to somebody who's never seen it before. So the top of this motor starter, you're going to see the letters A1 and NO for normally open. And there's numbers next to them too. At the bottom, you're going to see A2 and another NO, which stands for normally open. So those are of primary concern for the control circuit. The motor feed or the three phase that comes into the motor is always going to be tied into L1, L2, and L3. It's always going to come out something that says T1, T2, T3. Now, this has a overload block built into it. So your real T1, T2, T3 is at the bottom. T1, T2, T3. So I'd have my wires coming out of the bottom of this, very similar to the Square D magnetic starter, except these would come out and go to another motor. And it's more clearly labeled. So the control circuit, once again, A1 and A2, really stands for the coil. So if I went up here to my drawing and marked A1, A2, that's my coil. Then, if you look again back at this starter, you have what says normally open 13 and normally open 14. That's my holding circuit. So I left this up from yesterday. Remember, our holding circuit on the Square D magnetic starter was... Uh, labeled as two and three. That's not the case. This one, it actually says the wire numbers are 13 and 14. That's my holding circuit for this motor starter. So, you know, you got to have experience with a variety of these things, or at least know the language. So I know a, a holding contact or a holding circuit is usually going to be used with a normally open contact. So I opened up the device and found my normally open contact, which most motor starters provide. And it allows me to be able to hold that circuit in as a, as a latching or holding circuit when I energize it. So all we did was we took the new uh, numbers from the new motor starter, translated them to our simple stop-start circuit. The only other thing we need to know now is where is the overload? So on this particular motor starter, you know, the Square D magnetic starter, the overloads were on the bottom, those two screws. One of them said X2, and it was kind of hard to see where it was. They even gave you factory supplied wires. Well, in this particular setup, uh, what you're going to see is there's an auxiliary set of contacts down here. One set is normally closed, and it has numbers on it, 95 and 96. And then you got another set of contacts that are normally open, 97 and 98. Now, if this motor trips on overload, what's going to happen is these two little buttons right here, watch. If I close this cover, part of this button is actually hitting reset. And I could test it by pulling out the knob. So, in other words, if this motor trips on overload, what's going to happen is this normally closed contact is going to open and this normally open contact is going to close. So that's why I have wires tied on to the normally closed. So remember when our drawings, we, our overloads are normally closed. So what I'm actually doing is I'm coming off the A2 side of the coil and I'm going into the overload and I'm actually coming into number 96. If you look right here, I got a wire that comes all the way around and it's it's brown 
and it sneaks into A2. You can kind of see it coming into A2. Difficult to get the wire under there. So I'm actually leaving A2 and going into 96. And I'm leaving number 95. You can reverse it if you want. It'll still work. I'm leaving number 95 and going back to my 24 volt source because that's what this coil is. So I leave number 95 and go back home to my source voltage. Now, uh, to, in another video, we're going to see this thing up and operational. We're going to trip it. We're going to put our own meter across this. We're going to hook up an indicator light to let us know that the motor actually overloaded. And we'll get an indication. We'll, we'll put in a red or a green light for run indication. We'll put a yellow light for overload indication and we'll put a red light for stop letting us know the motor stops so we'll add some stuff to this to make it a little more interesting but if you trace the wire out it's very similar circuit to the one we did yesterday looking at your diagram you've got a feed to the stop you've got your internal jumper going to your start off that same screw of the start button we come all the way up to our normally open contact for our holding circuit and that's represented by this this and this then I come off the other side of that open contact back to my switch I come off the other side which is underneath here the other NO I come off the other side of it in red back to my switch of course my start button then I come back off that start button again over to my coil which is A1 so here I came off the other side of that contact, back to my switch, off that same screw of the switch, over to A1. Then I come off of A2, and I want overload protection. So I came off of A2 into my overload, through a normally set of closed contacts, back home, through a normally set of closed contacts, back home to my source and if it trips on overload that'll kill the circuit so you'll see this running with indicator lights in the next video uh, this is an eaton uh, brand motor starter uh, cutler hammer is, a, is the kind of the generic brand whatever it was back then it used to be cutler hammer and then it became eaton and who knows Krauss Heinz and all kinds of other stuff but anyways that's the motor starter for this there's more information on the side. There's actually a lot of technical information. And as far as sizing my overload, there's now I have an adjustment dial. So based upon my calculation, I could simply put my screwdriver in here and turn this based upon my amp reading that I got on my calculation. And there's other dip switch settings in here for other trip class parameters that you probably likely won't learn until you take an advanced motor calc. Uh, overload type class. So that's all I got and I'll see you in the next video.